Hi there and thanks for joining us for today's tutorial uh, where we're actually going to be looking at multiplying decimals using the lattice method. We are 100% focused on the decimal part for this tutorial. If you're not already familiar with the lattice method and you've not used it yet with whole numbers then please check out our tutorial dedicated to that first of all. As I say, we won't really be concentrating on the method itself, we are just concentrating on the decimal part. So with that said, our first question that we're going to look straight at is 4.2 times 7. This is a two digit number times by a one digit number, so we will use a rectangle two units by one unit with 4.2 along the top and 7 at the side. Now when multiplying with decimals it's much easier if both numbers are decimals. As 7 is a whole number, let's think of it as 7.0 instead, in which case the decimal point would go here after the 7. OK, now both our numbers have points in and it'll be much easier to do. Put your diagonal lines in just as you would do normally. We filled in the boxes, we filled the squares in. Notice that the decimal points made no difference here. We still did 2 times 7 to get 14 and we still multiplied 4 by 7 to get 28. And in fact, there's no difference in the next step either. We still add the diagonal columns and we still start from the right hand side. Now obviously 4.2 times 7 is not 294, so now we need to decide where our decimal point is going to go. And this is the method that I suggest you use. Put a finger on each decimal point. Then go straight down from the point at the top and straight across from the point at the side until the fingers meet like so. Then from the point where your fingers met, follow the diagonal line down to the bottom. This is where your point will go. So our answer is actually 29.4. It's always worth checking that these answers make sense. If you go back to our original question, 4.2 is a little more than 4. 4 times 7 is 28, so our answer should be a little larger than 28. And sure enough, 29.4 is, so it makes perfect sense. OK, we're going to look at a few more examples, but our grids will already be filled in. We're just going to be looking at where the decimal points go. So here we're looking at 4.6 times 7.3. And I filled the grid in already, as I just stated. So we're going to focus in on the decimal points here and here. Just as before, we're going to go down from the top and across from the side until your fingers meet. Where they meet, follow that diagonal line down to the bottom, and this is where our point will go. So an answer this time of 33.58. And again, check it makes sense. 4.6, pretty close to 5. 7.3, roughly 7. 5 times 7 is 35. Our answer should be about that size. And again, sure enough, it is. Even a quite complex looking question like this one here is made fairly easy. 3.17 times 5.8. We just need a finger pointing at each decimal point, down from the one at the top, across from the one at the side until they meet. Follow that diagonal line down to see where our point will go. Final answer this time, 18.386. And finally, 42.5 times 73. Like our first example, 73 is a whole number and does not have a decimal point in it. So think of it as 73.0, in which case the point needs to go after the 3 there. Again, down from the top, across from the side until they meet. Follow that diagonal down to see where the point should go. Obtain our final answer, 3102. Okay, that's all there is to it. Hopefully now you can see why I like this method so much. For me, it makes working with the decimal part so easy. You may want to look at some division next. Either way, don't forget to go along to the website at meversusmath.com if you need some practice or are just after some more help. Thanks for watching as ever, and hopefully I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.